We have a very interesting aircraft here. Could you tell us about it? Hi, uh, this is NASA's test bed for distributed electric propulsion. It's called the Grease Lightning, or we call it the GL10, mm -hmm. uh, for the 10 motors that we have on it. It's an all-electric vehicle. This version is uh, battery-powered. Uh, our future versions, though, we're looking to go to hybrid electric, where we'll have uh, a fuel motor generator set, um, but providing electric power to the motors. Great, could you show us around? Sure. So the general layout of the vehicle is a tandem wing vehicle. Um, it looks like a regular airplane, but actually there's more load being carried on the tail of the vehicle than on a regular vehicle. So the center of gravity of the vehicle is a little further aft. Um, it is back here in this region. In most vehicles, the center of gravity is more up towards the front part of the wing. So this is a tandem configuration, and both the wing and the tail tilt. Um, and they, but they don't tilt it on exactly the same schedule. You, you can see when we're tilting it here that the tail actually precedes the wing a little bit. And that has to do with the scheduling during flight and keeping the vehicle level and controllable during the transition phase. Um, so this vehicle uh, has a large number of electric motors. Um, each one of these motors puts out about uh, one and a half horsepower and they are controlled by a controller which so each each electric motor um, is controlled independently and during the hover phase it's changing RPM very quickly to keep the vehicle level and controllable during flight. Uh, we also have folding props, so during the cruise mode, when the wing is over in a regular airplane configuration, these inboard props actually fold down and only the outer two motors will be running. Um, so we can save a, quite a bit of power in the forward cruise mode by just running the wingtip props. During the cruise flight, um, when we shut down the other eight motors, we're only running the wingtip props, and in an airplane, you have a large efficiency loss by the wingtip vortex, where you have high pressure and low pressure, and it creates a vortex coming off the wingtip. But when you put a, a motor prop on the wingtip and rotate it in the opposite direction, you can gain back some of that efficiency by having an opposite vortex coming off of the motor prop combination. Um, so we gain back about 10% efficiency by doing that. So on this version of the vehicle, we're using a, uh, a commercial off-the-shelf controller with some modified software to be able to control the vehicle and control it effectively from hovering flight to forward flight and the in-between phase, which is called the transition, uh, which is very hard to do with VTOL vehicles. You need to mix these signals, the hover, hovering mode signals and the forward flight signals. You, there's probably maybe 75 to 100 parameters that we need to mix, almost like a, mix, a music mixing board where you're mixing these signals in the proper amounts to be able to jump from hovering to forward flight and then back again. So. Uh, Luckily, we've been able to work with some out, outside groups. Uh, there, it's actually using open source software in this phase, um, but in the future, we have an in-house effort to design a controller that'll be even more capable and do full autonomy, so take off, full mission flight, and then landing again um, all autonomously, and have an a autonomy incubator group, which is a group with us here today, they are developing the controller and the code to do all of that. So these are just regular yarn tufts and it's a technique that's used uh, for flight testing where you really want to visualize the flow at the surface. Um, so it's just regular regular yarn. In this vehicle, when, when the wing is tilting, there are times when the flow on the top of the wing is, has totally separated from the surface and you'll see these tufts actually going backwards at times, um, but even even during those phases where we've lost or where the flow has separated on the wing, we still have quite a bit of lift on the wing because the motors up in front of the wing are blowing 
the air over the wing so you get this artificial velocity of flow over the wing from, from these props. Um, so that is an additional feature of this design and, and a reason for the large number of motor propellers on the wing is because you get a beneficial effect of this artificial blowing during these times when you don't have a lot of uh, forward velocity. So in the next phase of the Grease Lightning project, we're going to be integrating a hybrid electric motor genset uh, with the vehicle. We have, we're working with a company called LaunchPoint who uh, are creating these motor gensets for us. Uh, this is a typical fuel motor with a generator on it and the generator will supply the electricity for the electric motors on the vehicle during the cruise phase. So how did this get its name? Uh, okay, so Grease Lightning, uh, it's kind of a funny name, um, but it's a reference to the hybrid electric where, where, where you would use a heavy, any heavy fuel. It can be fryer grease, it could be <laughs> diesel fuel, JP4, JP8. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where the grease part of the Grease Lightning comes from. And then the lightning part has to do with the electric, uh, the electric motors and the electric system. So grease lightning. Uh, it's no reference to the movie. It's <laughs> <laughs> so when we started out, you said that uh, this is just your starting point at this point. Where are you going to be heading after this? Correct. Uh, so the next step for us is to move from battery power to hybrid electric. Mm -hmm. And so we'll be retrofitting this test vehicle with a small motor gen set in the fall. Um, in the future, we hope to build uh, higher quality versions of this from the things we've learned um, and our, hopefully our next vehicle will be a 20-foot wingspan hybrid electric. Now, how does this differ from some of the systems that are out there now? There's a, the Osprey, for example, but there are a lot before that that weren't necessarily as successful. Correct. So this vehicle is all about cruise efficiency. So the problem with hovering flight is it's not very efficient. Um, you, you're burning a lot of energy when you're in hovering. Um, so multi-copters, helicopters, they're only a third as efficient as a forward flight vehicle. So this is uh, an attempt to demonstrate what you can do with a VTOL vehicle and get to very efficient uh, flight. It's about four times more efficient than hovering flight. Well, excellent. I look forward to seeing the next version. Thank you. Thank you.